Yeah! Good afternoon, everybody! Welcome to the last regular live show of the week. Crowd surfing, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. Wait, we're going that way again. I'm Camilla. Oh, Mike, Mike didn't get the memo. I didn't get the memo. You were also looking directly at him. You're right, because that's how it's always <laughs> been and always shall be <laughs> when Mike is here. So and here's how we always counterclockwise. Unless Mike's here, then it's counterclockwise. That's correct. Say your no, name. Or Joey. I'm Zeke Garcia. Call me Australia, because this is flush and counterclockwise. I know. I was also trying that's to figure out what I always said. think of when I think of Australia. Right. It's flushing. Yep. Anyway, hi everybody. Hey, I hope you're watching from Australia. I I'm sorry for what I said about your country slash continent. Pick one, okay? You can't be both. <laughs> well, not both because New Zealand's included. Who? Uh, <laughs> New I'm hitting everybody Welcome today. To Z insults the South. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Give me another one. Give me another one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we good? Uh, this is uncomfortable for all of us. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. Tomorrow, the Dice Tower Marathon begins. Thirty-hour marathon. Ooh. You it's, said that this was the last live show. As the last regular. regularly scheduled it live show. It was in bold. Show. Did you not hear it? Oh, I didn't hear the bold. Mm, yeah. It was in italics. Uh, yeah, see, my italics Close. has been off yeah. the last couple of weeks. So before we do all that, we have this show. We'll go through that. So we're going to get started. We're going to first take a look at um, our sponsor, Backer Kit, one of the projects on there right now. So this project here is Sentinels of the Multiverse Disparation Expansion. Um, this has been funded already, and mm. now you can just go pre-order it. Actually, it makes it, you know, a guaranteed if you want to get that. Uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse is their newest expansion, and what this does, there's some of the theme in here where Omnitron X comes back through time, but what this does is it adds a new kind of card, dis dis I can't even pronounce it, Desperation Cards. Mm. Um, so there already is hero, villain, environment for, I don't know, six billion combinations, mm -hmm. and this ups it to six the gazillion. <laughs> uh, no, it does. That's more. That's gazillion. more. Gazillion. Gazillion. Wow. So what Desperation does is it, it changes the hero. So you play a hero, and then it will change it in some sort of way, how they work. Sometimes it synergizes, it says, and sometimes it changes them notably. Um, and so that just increases the different combinations that you can play. Mm. You already have probably the definitive version of this, if you like this game. Six heroes, Chrono Ranger, I do like him, Pars, the Visionary, Omnitron X, Knife, <laughs> and Dark Strife and Pain State. Oh. I think Knife would stab me if you heard me say his name incorrectly. I think, uh, I think it's yes. Knife. You think? Okay. When you meet him, do you say Knife or do you say K-N-Y-F-E? Is it, oh, is it with a Y? With a Y? Yeah. He just goes, I'm knife. Maybe it's me. With a Y. Maybe and then the, he slices the Y in you. Maybe the Y is silent. <laughs> Either way, you can go to back <laughs> right now and you can pledge for this. All right, so let's take a look at our regular projects. And guys, I have a sad news to tell you. Yeah. What? The uh, wonderful bountifulness of the last few weeks is, is oh. less. Oh, is we less. noticed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's. Lower in quantity, but I, much higher in quality. Didn't say that. Oh, <laughs> was that in italics? I, I don't said <laughs> Mike shows up and the projects <laughs> are tank. Yeah, we'll see. No, yeah. there's there's at least one very big project this week, there's and it's this not a really ones. a project. I know. We're gonna I'm get so to that. Intrigued uh, okay. by We're it. gonna get Ooh, to that. Well, let's start with Gun It. Your crew is surrounded, and time's about to run out. So. This is a cooperative tabletop. I have to say, I, I kind of like the theming of this a lot. I, I love the theming. Mm -hmm. I just am very worried about the real time. Okay, did you... The real time, it reminded me kind of Project Elite. But okay. as, a, as opposed to like reacting in the real time, just during that real time, you have two minutes to pretty much program your actions. Okay. And so you have a hand of cards, and in that two minutes, it's like, okay, well, you're in that seat, fine. Well, you do, you take this card, so you can hit them over there, but give me your this, because I'll turn the card that way. And so you're programming during that, that two minutes, instead okay. of it being like this frantic, like, oh, go, roll the dice, keep roll. going. Yeah. So I think okay. that takes that, I, I, I'm assuming, or it kind of feels like it's going to take that real time pressure off a little bit. But um, because it's more of the, the programming. So I think it's really interesting. I was actually kind of surprised because it seems like a couple of unique mechanisms and unique things going on that mm. it wasn't um, funding higher than it currently is. I think is. it's going to be a lot of fun to I'm play, I hope. Um, this has been done before, though, and there's sometimes it works great. But like Space Cadets, I don't think has aged well. And that's a game that does this. It has programming yeah. and real time. And... Then the wrong stuff goes in the wrong spots, and you're like, well, okay, that was fun to watch. Right, now, if right. this is a short game and you just watch yourself crash and burn, 
I mean, it looks exciting from the card animated GIF that they're showing us yeah. here. <laughs> That is exciting. I'm interested in it. What Randy O'Connor did, what, what else did he do? <clears throat> Let's look here. Roll in One, which I know you guys love, and <laughs> Scoundrels, also a very popular game. Yeah, I don't I'm know either, either of those either games. Of that looks like Bugs Bunny from here. I thought it was. <laughs> no, that's a uh, bag that's bunny. That's Steamboat <laughs> Bunny. <laughs> Steamboat Bugs. You laugh, and we'll talk about this in the news. The Steamboat Willie board game has been announced. <laughs> Oh, oh I can't believe! So I, I would have yeah. thought it would have been announced but a long but time I, but ago. But I think it's from a no-name company because all the other companies are like, "We'll watch." Yeah, let's just yeah, wait yeah, and see how this goes. Yeah, let you take it out. Yeah, all right, we put some dice sets in here because, well, <laughs> I was running out of other projects. So we have um, these dice are made from apparently planets yes. ac across our solar system. Correct. I was out as soon as I saw the sun was included and Pluto wasn't. So <laughs> I'm still salty. I'm a '90s Who's kid. Pluto. Then. Pluto's very 2012, Camilla. He's the dog of the time. He's the dog of the time. It's 2024. Pluto's dead. Give me Pluto. The or planet's keep your dead. Dice. It's a black hole you know now. Where you can put those dice. <laughs> Which was your favorite? What here, is guys? going on here? Uh, okay, I love Pluto, by the way. I like, actually, my favorite one is the one where you want Mike to put the dice. <laughs> Right there, look at that. That's a nice color, man. Yeah, it's wrong with you. <laughs> Isn't that a nice it's color? A good look. It's good green. I like that. That's a good look. Oh, that's painful, my, that's but a good look. That's my favorite, actually. Of all I the don't sets. like the numbers. <laughs> the numbers are a little sci fi, mm -hmm. and I yeah. get it, but. They're also a little smaller, I think. They are yeah. small. Yeah. Trying yeah. to get fancy with the fonts is not always the best idea for legibility. Mm -hmm. I like the Mars ones the best, uh, oh, but not for actually using as dice. I just like that. that coloring yeah you just can't read them I think the no. jupiter's a pretty it's kind of like tiger's eye almost yeah, so why neat. in mars did they put like all the different colors of mars but then earth is just mostly blue or and is there green not on even, it it's not even the color of blue of like the ocean it's, it's more really like, it's like a royal blue deep blue yeah yeah, yeah. all right Dungeon and Dice Advent Counters. Now, it may seem like we just talked about this did and that's because this we yeah, I missed, did i did not you see added this, this late also. yeah we haven't seen this yeah this Wait. is new. None of us saw this You've, com you, you've completely thrown off this whole show. No, it was definitely in the thing I yeah, said to you. How did Z and I not see it? Well, maybe because your eyes just um, rolled across it. Hacked! Wait, are you being serious? You didn't see this one? No, no I did not see oh, this I one. I, I didn't know if I had like, ruined your joke. No, no, no. no, no there was no either. joke. I, I okay, didn't get so it. We That's just cool. Did I mean, a dice, it's fine. We just did a dice advent calendar, I think, last week or the week before. Okay, yeah. here we go. But this is a different one. Oh, good. I do like that in the video, they actually show the they dice even have a from, video? Yeah, they show the dice from last year's advent calendar. So I think it gives you a really... Oh, that's smart. Because in these, it's like these unknowns you don't know you're going into. And yeah. so it's like, good call showing me all the dice from last year so okay. you kind of can see the quality of what you're getting. The, you know, an so, idea wow. of the They're variation sharp. and well, all. Those are nice. Those other ones were really crazy. Okay, those cute. are nice. That's cute. Christmas. I don't know what that's trash. No. Uh, oh, no. Oh. You don't like that one? I like oh. that one. Well, that one's actually. Oh. I like that one. Could no. be the lighting on that mm. one. No. That's <laughs> <laughs> nah, okay. What about the eighth day of Christmas? That looks good. good. I like that. Like that's the plain good. black one. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Oh, I think that one's pretty. That's not that's even cool. December. Yes. That's February. That's a two sided die. Yes. <laughs> And my one was distracted by the nails and that the whole time. Completely. Yeah. I had to watch twice because the first time I was watching your nails. <laughs> okay. Well, this is the first time I watched it, so I didn't what have did any you issue. See? <laughs> Let's a good nail job. start over again. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's now much better the second the time. <laughs> I missed some things that first time around. All right, here we go. Next project. All right. Reign of Hades. Now, this is a big project. Yeah, this for is a sure. big one, too. I guess. But wow, is the Hades theme. <laughs> like, this is the third game in a month. Yeah. That's crazy. That is, yeah, that seems to be the thing right now. 2024 is the year of Hades. I mean, it's, <laughs> what happened? it's all over the internet. <laughs> what happened a year ago that everyone was like, oh, that's the theme I'm going to do next that's year. You know what true. I'm saying? Because like, mm. all these have obviously been planned. The graphics are done. They have prototypes. Yeah. It was it's all started like in 2020. It's a four-year <laughs> oh, <laughs> four right. right. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Hey, that's a sense. book. Please keep putting books yeah. in yeah, games. Yeah, agreed. That's I love fantastic. the video and the video animation. They show the pages turning, mm. but the minis are on it. <laughs> so it's just like, 
It just like goes, whoosh, and the minis just kind of like disappear. <laughs> they disappear in there, and there's already that. minis on the new one. I'll put it's it. like, is this a pop-up book? Oh, yeah. Let fantastic. me put it to you this way. If it actually worked that way, oh I would back goodness. it. If you do make a game with a book, though, mm -hmm. I just played one with a, with a book, and the setup was on the previous page. So I was like, what? Oh. Okay, what? put these here, here, and here. I, I was really annoyed by that. Yeah, that's... It was only like a few things. But it was still annoying. That is a terrible they, idea. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you have to like take a picture of it each turn. You know. Yeah, this one is interesting. Uh. I, I I can't tell. It looks like it's not that complex, right? Like uh, a lot of these games look like there's a whole lot going on. This seems to be a little bit more streamlined. Um, this one looks okay. And to it's me. not it overwhelming with minis, right? It, like you can tell. It, you get that feeling, or I got that feeling of this is someone's first project. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. It's like, yeah, they're swinging for the fences, and hey, kudos on that. But it feels like someone's first project. Mm. And, and there was nothing that was quite jumping out at me that made me feel like, oh, this is the one Hades game to get. Yeah. You got some stiff competition. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Every other game is Hades now. I, I don't okay. want to speak against the, I mean, the miniatures look fine, but I think the artwork is not good. Uh, I really dislike the art. Um, these four X dual layered shield boards, those are good if they sit on the table properly. I'm a little worried about that. Yeah, you think they could be mm -hmm. the little. Well, they got five wheels on them. All right. So maybe that it gives them work, some support. Yeah. They did talk about their dice system being a whole thing where it's like yeah. rolling the dice is just the first step. <laughs> right, that works. And then after that, you're like, you can manipulate them, level them up. It reminded yeah. me a little bit of. Um, that one you like uh, with the aquatic look. Oh, Tidal Blades. Yeah, the, the oh. first Tidal Blades has the dice that you kind of level yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But in this one, it looks like you do it in the fight. Oh. Like you roll and oh, level up a die and then turn into a face you want and whatever. Mm. You, know? you get like adrenaline? I don't know. Some yeah, you got Hades juice. I think a lot comes down to this 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 spinning dial thing yeah, and the yeah. stuff. They like to upgrade tiles. That sounds cool. It does, but the one thing I, I mean, I'm I'm kind of broken record here, but I'm less interested because it's campaign. It doesn't look like it's a one-off type of a I system. Did, I saw that, but I didn't see how many games it is. Twenty. I think twenty. It games. is twenty. Okay, so that's reasonable and approachable. I think twenty is kind of right at the line okay. of where I. The price isn't bad, honestly. It. If that's not, if that's the one with minis, the twenty's my upper limit. Man. It may not say, be yeah, between ten and twenty. Is good, is where you want to be. But like I'm playing Agamonia right now, and I would say that each of them is a minimum of two hours. Long. Hello. Well, that's where How I am. many things are there in though? Like twenty, twenty. Hello. Yeah. But that's that's where, a lot. That's where we are <laughs> with Oathsworn, but each one is what three hours, three and a half hours. Sure, I mean, but that one's and it's more it's, fifteen, I think. Yeah, it's a little bit so, less, but it's so it's. I thought it was twenty, but anyway. I don't yeah, know. I don't remember. They have good many. graphic design. They do. I don't love the artwork either, yeah. Tom, but I think their graphic design is very sharp. In fact, at first blush, I thought, is this an IV Studios game? Oh. Because it has that kind of graphic design. Their I see what you mean, kind of design. like the neon kind There's of There's something color. about their line work, yeah. the yeah. clean the graphics. Yeah, they do a really great amount of clean work. But then you get to the the actual artwork, and that's where they lost me a little bit. Yeah. Still, I feel, like, I feel like it's still a little bit too dark. I like the cards. I think they're really. But if you looked at the board when it shows everything set up, it does seem a little lost in the black for mm. me. Um, but I don't know. This game is right up my wheelhouse, though. Yeah. You know, I mean, it looks cool, and I hope. I, I hope it's good. I hope that the I, uh, I hope the upgrade system's awesome. Because if there's one thing I found in these games I like, it's the I go into the next battle. And it's like, what do I have now? Yeah. Like yeah. again, I'm playing Agamonia, and in between each scenario, you're reading stuff from your character has some growth, whether it's physical or story wise. Yeah. That's just fun. There's like a story beat, but when you go into the next one, they're like, you had a stick, and the next one you also have a stick, <laughs> but now the enemy's harder. Right. I'm yeah. less excited. Yeah. Because that's what yeah. video games are. You like to go up in levels. Sure. It's just, I think there's a crossover here. Okay. All right, before we go to our next project, we got a word here from Mr. Mark. Street, baby! This spotlight is brought to you by Furyland's Ashes of Avalon. The once peaceful lands of Avalon have been invaded by a terrifying and merciless source of evil. Furylands from Warrior Games is the cooperative fantasy role-playing board game for up to four players. Forge your hero, embark on quests, challenge dangerous foes, and find incredible items to boost your power. Create a totally customized character using innovative skill pairing system. There are no restrictive predefined classes in Furylands. You create your own class. 
play one of 12 characters, each with their own special traits and starting items. Characters start as a blank slate for you to mold into your ultimate adventurer. Mix any two of the nine skill lines together to create a totally unique character. Customize your character even further as the game progresses, adding life, mana, skill power, and skill variety. Play over 60 highly detailed, full-color maps while playing through an epic campaign storyline. Explore haunted ruins, cryptic dungeons, frozen landscapes, and more. Quests are paired with events that can drastically affect difficulty. Your party will face some tough decisions. Take the easy quest with standard rewards or try on the boss quest with added enemies and major loot. Featuring over 40 hours of content and amazing replayability, only one hope remains for the lands of Avalon, a ragtag band of adventurers aligned to a singular mission, the destruction of Dresdoth and his army. For more information, please check out the campaign, which is coming soon to Kickstarter. <laughs> Who can pronounce this game for me? I okay. got you, man. Oh. Oh, Yuchamin. Pass. Whoa, what? Yuchamin. You the that man? That was different when you said the first time. Sure, I think that's what it means, Yuchamin. <laughs> There's Yuchimin. no video here. No, no, it's a small little publisher. Yeah. Mike? It's a small Japanese publisher. Yeah, go ahead. It's all so, you. So, all I can say, as far as like previous knowledge, is I did play... The game they released last year, which was called Rotoro, and it was almost like a this is his studio. First oh, he may not have, or they may not have uh, crowdfunded that last one. They month. only made four copies. No, no, no. It was it was, there, there was a <laughs> yeah. It looked like a Studio Ghibli type of a thing, and it was a, an interesting worker placement game. This looks very much like a Euro, right? I mean, from what I can tell. Yeah. Although there's a neat. I kind of like that it's bro the board is broken into two parts. The first part uses the ratchet system, Tom. I love the ratchet. Where there are four different paths, and you have to choose one mm -hmm. of the first two, and then it gets to a, a merging spot, and then you can choose which of the other two. And in that first area, you're getting resources. You have me at ratchet. Yeah, and at the second at the second part, you are using those resources, so there's a bit of a pick up and deliver. There's upgrading your ship, because you can only hold three resources at the beginning, and when you pay them, you have to pay from the top to the bottom. Ooh. So, yeah, so you can, you can, uh, but when you go back to port, you can, ex you can rearrange them. So, I don't know, there's some interesting things going on here, for sure. It definitely felt like, when I was looking at it, a big Euro game slimmed down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of like how uh, Convon AV to Bot Factory, how right. like, you're wrong. You know what I mean? That's yeah. kind of the vibe I was getting. I was like, I really like it, and I loved it. The thing that really hooked me on this one was the river system yeah. with that ratchet. Yeah, it looked neat. You know, because, yeah, you got to go get these resources, but it's only available it's from this tree mm -hmm. up here, so you have to go this way, but you need right. the other one, so then you're wasting time. Yep. And it just, thematically, yep. it was such a neat tie, I thought. Yeah. I also enjoyed the ratchet. Yeah. Too late. Uh, ratchet is good. <laughs> You know, this reminds me a little bit of the game that Peter Hall, uh, Hall's designed a long time ago. Oh, you mean um, the the big one? Yeah, but it was the same thing. You it went and got your stuff, but then you went out and fought. You went out Here and fought, and you had like and a, going out and delivered. You had hidden strength in that one. Why can I not think of that game? Yeah, because I Francis also Drake. Francis Drake, yes. Has a little bit of that a little feel bit to of that. it. Yeah. Because yeah. it has that two phases. Right. And Yeah, that's true. There's a little bit of a, yeah, I can see that feel. And they have different types of workers. I love the fact that one of the workers is a clown. No, that's not a no, clown. No, it's legitimately a clown. Yeah, oh, you're yeah. right. Okay. It says clown <laughs> It's there. a clown. I was, to... I was like, some people wore those yeah. things, though. What, is, no. what does clown. the clown do? The, clown, What's his the job? clown entertains people at the, at the, at the town spots. Do you, does everyone get a clown? Everyone gets a clown. I want a clown. You get a clown. You get a clown. You get a clown. Roy? No clown for you, no sorry. Clown. What? Uh, we're out of clowns. Off. We're out of clowns. Fresh out. <laughs> we're clowned out. Yeah. All right. I'm, let's go to the next clowning project. All right. Wolf days, oh. cat days, and dino days. How long did it take you guys to like figure out that it's the same game? With three different pictures, like three different themes. Uh, I'll tell you, it took me today. to right now it took because me I now. couldn't figure out oh, what really? I was looking at. I was today years old. Oh, okay. Never Boy, <laughs> do I hate that. That's one of Mike's least favorite phrases. Oh, I hate it. So this is from Zatu Games, and they are actually They're more known in, in Great Britain as a, an online store. Yes. Right. Yeah, I, I think they may have done a game or two here or they there. They did one before this, yeah, as far yeah. as I could tell. Well, let's right. see what it is. 
It's a game Steel, called Steel uh, Coliseum. I remember we talked about that oh, in crowd surfing, yeah. actually. Wow, I, I, I had no recollection of this Yeah, one. I remember that. Oh, that funny. game looks great. Okay, anyway, back to <laughs> to Wolf Days. Yeah, uh, so this is legitimately the same game, just and in three different themes. From what I could tell. I mean, I, I made it through the cat one. I was like, wait, <laughs> this is like copy and paste, just with your wa a cat on each day okay. instead of, you know. So you have a week uh, card for each day of the week, and the game that end is triggered is when one player has a, an animal on each of the day. And so you're kind of doing some set collections, but you can also play the cards for power or put them on a day. Maybe a little take that, but it didn't seem like I kept waiting for that. I don't, it didn't come through as strong. So, um, did they yeah. go they also to a have middle like, school for the art? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's they had bad a, art. Like some of the cards, some of the dogs, which is the one I was looking at. They can only go on specific days of the week, also. Right. Or so it's like it's got a real racco kind of feel, right? <laughs> right. Sign yeah. me up. So, I'm in. 18 people. Let's go. But yeah, you can only play some on certain days or some next to other ones. So it's kind of like that tableau builder with the restrictions on the different animals. Um, yeah, to me, it sounded so, like racco meets eleven C's, and I couldn't tell you how much I'm not interested in that combination. <laughs> I think I'm done with any 11 C's game. Um, mm. That system is just bores me. That's yeah, it's, it's kind of like you. the Cabo system. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that whole yeah. system. Yeah. But hey, Wait. dogs. There's a German Shepherd. Yeah, I didn't and think a, it looked bad. This is definitely one I would try. I don't there's think a you would try. Yeah, I don't think I'm as, as tired of that mechanism as y'all. Well, I'm definitely tired of that art. Though. Look at that rug. Who drew that rug? A three-year-old? Come on. You know, you know how upset Labradors are. Look. You got the German Shepherd looks very regal. You got the Chihuahua looking very cute. Look at the and then you got this Labrador who looks like it's been like you know. To be fair, my Labrador often looks like that. I don't so. know if you look worse than a Chihuahua, then uh, right. it's a bad day. Yo quiero a good picture. Hi, right. Main <laughs> Magazine. Now we must have talked about this before. I didn't know there was an 18x. Maybe and maybe I said that last time too, and I'm forgetting. Yeah, I don't remember this. Yeah, so if you like 18xx games, this is, I mean, I think this is actually really cool. Yeah. Because you're going to get stuff in the magazine that you can mess with. And people yeah. that are into 18xx are really into it, so I can see, yeah. you know, if you, especially if you're doing a relatively small print run, you know. Um, I can see it being a good return as well. Yeah. It sounds like you're getting. It is interesting that 18xx games have their own magazine. Yeah. Is there a trick taking magazine? Because that is like a perfect there like, is not, fit, you know what gee? I mean? There is not. Because people are kind of super into it. There's tons Ooh. of them. You can literally fill that magazine for years with just upcoming releases. You could talk about games from You could post on there ago. like, hey, you can play this with your deck of cards. Right. You could have yeah, yeah. featured games. There would be a lot of strategy articles, though. Ooh. There would be some of that. You could do that. Not like this, though. Well, you you could about classic games. I know, yeah, a few, I know a few people. I'm, I'm telling you, a like, few people a magazine about, about trick-taking games would do very well right now. It really How would. How long would it do well for, though? Like, is that... Trick-taking okay. games. Days. <laughs> no, yeah. so I, I think it going. is sustained. There's enough material to sustain it, but do you think well, this Well, there's 50 years of material, too. I mean, go enough. talk about hearts. You can talk about spades. That's what I mean. This is why I don't do games have limits back, you know, backwards, like, in history. The trick thing right. games, you can really like, there's so such history there. Yeah. You can talk about modern ones. Right. Or anyway, I'm going off I the rails how, like, here. Interest right. would be. <laughs> yeah. But um, I have no experience in magazine production. I think I'm going all in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sell everything I got. I all want right. part of this Kickstarter money, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a finder's fee. All Wait, right. What? Let's go back to GameFound. Oh, $20. Um, yeah, exactly. The arena of what? Who can? Huh? It's, it's like a metal rap rap room. It's Baratum, but that may be one of the worst titles I've seen in the <laughs> long time. Really you could not read that. Yeah, Baratum, that looks like a junior high metal band. Yeah. That was We're going back to junior high. The theme of today. <sighs> junior high and Okay, Hades. but let's talk about the game if we ever get to it. Because um, we're still talking about it. Here we go. Box content. Standees. Looks a like. lion head shoved on a man. <laughs> No, that is. That's yeah. like a big beefy guy, and they're yeah. like lion head. Yeah. Is that like a, 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 a monkey thing. or an ape in the right side there? Yeah. How is this doing? Is this doing okay? Mm, I, don't I don't know. I don't remember on this one. No, it's not. Oh, okay. oh it hasn't even funded yet. No, well, it's, it's about not. it's about the fun. It looks like an abstract <laughs> game almost. I it really did. wasn't like feeling this one. Arena yeah, kind of one. Yeah. I like Sorry, battle arenas. I just, I don't know. But again, I this. I don't mind even animal people. 
I just don't like them when it clearly is just a head shoved on a person. Yeah, it it does. It looks like there was maybe not a big budget on this. And, sure. You know, I can understand is, that. A lot of DIY stuff. That's kind of what Kickstarter yeah. and game yeah. founds should be. But this is real indie. You can yeah. tell it's real indie. The guy even talks about this is my first game. It's the first game I've ever made, and now the first game from my new company. Yes. The yeah. Horned Toad or whatever mm -hmm. games. It's like, all right, so yeah, this is somebody's passion project yeah, yeah. i would assume i yeah. very much dislike the font as stupid as that sounds yeah. I, 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 it, it's something about it bothers somebody me. in the chat said they used the the doom font and i was like yes that's it oh like, is that but oh. it's right, that is four letters yeah. you know what i mean and two of them are o's like it's yeah like, yeah oh that's it's you're right that's so doom that is yeah. doom yeah or just it's metal it's just like yeah, any metal kind of font. yeah i think yeah. it just makes it pretty illegible mm -hmm. so yeah, miniatures look better the line looks better as a miniature painted wearing four shields. All right. Is that on sprues or? Meeple Source continues to gouge people here. These are so With expensive. their upgrade kits. They are really expensive. They are not cheap. And not only are they really expensive, how many birds do you need oh, for wingspan? You need Must for the game. Have all you the birds. need five. Yeah. <laughs> five. And this is not the first Kickstarter they've done for this. This is, I think, like the Maybe the sixth? I don't, maybe I'm exaggerating. See, I think the way you're supposed to do it is you take all of the wingspan birds and you dump them into a bowl. Then when you place a bird onto your board, you search through that bowl and point. you find that particular bird. Game within the game. Everyone waits, and then you put that bird on the card. Okay. Sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now, so Wormspan is here. and Okay, so I said Maple Source gadgets people. They do. And I still end up getting some of it because mm -hmm. I like to upgrade my games, and they really are good, good. meeples. I, I I've been debating on the Wormspan one because you have one guy, yep. mm -hmm. who you move down the paths, yep, and then you have the you don't have cubes in this game. You, the the cubes are used, but they're used to be put on. They're on different things. It's a track on the with the coins build. instead. I, yeah, and I definitely don't need a giant start player <laughs> dragon. Uh. As cool as that is. Uh -uh. Mm. Um, what did you think about the Arc Nova ones? I know they're not new; they're being reoffered. But what did you think about those? Um, let's get down to them. There's more wingspan. Oh yeah, yeah sorry, I went straight 2024, 2023. Wingspan, yeah. Here's yeah. the original. Like, cool. Here's more twenty wingspan. Wingspan. Okay, Arc Nova. They're they're Marina, fine. My concern with I don't like that they're different. Actually, I would if I'm going to use those animals as the things you mark your board with, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what they're for. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe then. I'm going to want them all to look the same. They have these little animals you can put your zoo, but I'm actually pretty happy with those little plastic ones I bought. Yeah. Why, why are they smaller? The little, uh, why are some big and some smaller? One. I think, okay, so these are the ones you use for your board. So those little ones are taking the place of cubes, I think. Okay. And then the large ones are your workers that, you know, instead of sending out a human being, you're going to send out a fox now. All makes no sense. Yeah, do well. That? This is the re-theme. There's yeah. no fox that can do my job. Obsession. I really like down here. Look at that oh, crowd of people for Obsession. That is Downton Abbey. Would you like everything? It's a $143 upgrade. What? What? Yeah. And the game is what? Well, 80? it's out of print. It depends 80. if it's in or out of print. No, it's in print. No, it's, it's pretty, um, like, it's staying in print now for the most part. Uh, but the problem is, like, for me... I don't really like these for Obsession. I think mm. it has a very like clean kind of classic look, and the not actual people looking ones fit the aesthetics of the game more. That's been my biggest beef with uh, Meeple Source. Not their quality, not even their price. Uh, it's the fact that a lot of times I feel like they don't fit the, like Scythe is a perfect example. Yeah. I, I, I don't <clears throat> want them in a game of Scythe because they're the so... Meeple the Garfield ones are pretty okay. Meeple Source has a... <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> because they fit that graphic. It's all Micho art, which is a little more cartoony. You see what I'm saying? Oh, they actually use... Oh, no, I see. they oh, do you're not. The game yeah. is the Micho. Okay. That's the thing. That's the thing about yeah. it. And I think I agree with you, Mike, that Meeple Source has their own, their own yes. art style. Yes. 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 Which might or might not clash with whatever game they're made for. Right. If yeah. they changed it up and tried to approximate the look of whatever they're making miniatures for or meeples for, mm -hmm. I think I might be a little more interested. Right. But you can pick up a, a mini, a, a meeple from Meeple Source 
And you can tell it's from them no matter what game it's Absolutely. for. Absolutely. They have their art style. Their art style, yeah. It doesn't fit everything, though. I That's do like thing. too, like you were saying. I think they have really good quality. Like the printing on them yes. are really good. Mm -hmm. They have really unique shapes. I've, you know, the ones I've played with and touched, I don't have a problem with them like falling over all the time. They seem stable. Like they're really good. I just wish that yeah, they would work a little more closely with the companies and get closer to that art style. Well, I yeah. wish they were. Um, they were cheaper. I do too. You I know. don't. Yeah, well, I mean, I definitely, of course, yes, I do, but I, I don't even mind for something quality paying more. I mean, in my obsession game, I have a quite expensive, <laughs> yeah. you know, a, a cost as much as the game kind of insert well, these are a little cheaper So I don't mind normal, putting game, money right. into my favorite games, right. but I That's just true. want it to bring that theme forward and sell the experience. A lot of times I find that the obsession ones, specifically I talk about, kind of kill that for me. I want to be clear, I like the obsession ones. I think they're cool. I don't. I always the, my to me the biggest weak point of obsession is the fading. I'll bring that to life. I like that Mr. Darcy theme. I want to see. I don't want to see just the silhouette to those well, you people. You did see the new one coming, right? The oh. deluxe one. Oh, that looks so good. All right, Incal Infinite from Why Not AI is the name of the company. Uh huh. Um, this is a graphic novel which I have not read. I'm not familiar with it either. Yeah. Uh, it says, it's a French graphic novel, so I don't I think really like this. It says, it's okay. like, just one of the best of graphic novels ever released for a host of obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, well, oh, well, of course. Of course. That doesn't, you That's just right. sold me. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. Say no more. For obvious reasons. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of interested in this because, well, I'm just interested in any, any game that's based on a graphic novel. Yeah, I kind of like that, too. I mean, I've actually, I've been turned on to some really good graphic novels from the board games, so... Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just that they're not really talking a ton here about the no. game! Yeah, yeah, I had to watch yeah. the little explanation from uh, Tarrant, mostly doing the, the overview there, and mm -hmm. I, I watched a piece of that, trying to understand what's going on. It's a co-op game. Okay. Set collecting. Um, mm. And you are trying to, as a team... Achieve enlightenment. I guess this is a thing in the book in which you there's these discs in front of the, 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 the different areas on the table. You need to figure out the order that they're in. They have a number. Mm. They need to be revealed in order. Okay. They're not all in place. So it might be like one, two, four, five, seven. Got it. If you do that, you win. It, however, seems like the card play and the set collecting is really straightforward. Mm -hmm. Each of these locations has a has a requirement, like two distinct pairs. You do that, you get to look at the token, put it back, but you can't tell people what you looked at. Mm. Oh, I don't. And like the players that. need to then, I guess, figure out how to pass this information. I I don't know. It just okay. gave me. It it put first and foremost. Uh, the, the the part I don't like from that witch game, the, um, the Salem Witch or whatever it's called, that one co-op game I like. Oh, Witch of Salem. Witch of Salem, yeah. It's that one aspect of that game that right. I don't like. So I know, like, but I can't tell you, even though we're together. So yeah. you yeah, have to go that's figure weird. it. We all have to do the same thing to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So which takes that cooperation out of yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a really easy game, though. Hmm. These guys are an interesting combo of designers. Mm. I actually did. Yeah. I'm glad they told me their games because yeah, I didn't right, recognize right. them. One guy's Time Stories, the other guy has made Kemet the Kemet, and, yeah, yeah, well, a lot of Yucatan, stuff. a lot of different things. That's an interesting combo. It, it really is for a game that seems nothing like I any games that. in there. Oh, seems viewer. really simple, yeah, yeah, which is interesting, and yeah. I think that'll be good if it can achieve mass appeal that way. Right. By yeah, being it's very which it's going to need to be if people yeah. are coming into this because of the comic. Well, it's it one of the most have. famous graphic novels of all time for, for obvious, obvious reasons. reasons so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, Masters of Realms. Now, this is not this is not a uh, board game related, but I just thought it was cool. This um, is super cool. This is a future. <laughs> it's really cool. This is really neat. Like you want to put out some tiles, do it. Wow. Make whatever you want. That's. It's just awesome. I like mm -hmm. that. And then you yeah. can, I like that it can also print 2D, or if you have a 3D printer, it can do the 3D. You know, if you want it, that, that file. I was like, yeah, I love kinda, that it gives that flexibility crazy. with it. I it thought, just you click cool. and drag and paint, and it go it, doo -doo -doo, it, it, it populates a forest it, or a town or like whatever. There's a bunch of video games like that, right? Yeah. Where you just drag forest to make forest, you drag roads to make yeah. roads. You know? do that now, yeah. but it's right. Yeah, but it's really it's just cool. Wild. I hope, hope this is like at Gen Con. 
Oh, I would love to go by and see, see this. I would really person. like to. Yeah, I thought this was really cool. This is one of those things, kind of like when we're talking about the um, RPG and stuff like that. You know, like the uh, terrains and and that stuff that you can print. I'm like, man, this makes me want to be into this. You know, because it's such mm. a cool product. I'd use these in board games if I could figure out how to do so. But does this have a print and play version? Shout out to Joey. Probably not, right? <laughs> it is not, print no, and play. The whole yeah, thing is print and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play. Wrong place for that joke. Yeah, Mike. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, I, there, yeah, it was a multi-layer joke for obvious reasons. <laughs> All right. So the Dead Keep is the first time that I think on Game Found here that someone is putting up just a straight pre-order. Yeah, that's okay. what we were. We it were wondering about. It is not a Kickstarter. This. It is a straight pre-order, which that comes out next year. I mean, it's Sorry, a, is that a crowdfunded project? Yeah. It is a pre-order, which is different, which means it's going to happen, right? Yes. yes. The difference about is, a year from now. <laughs> sure, the differences are actually minimal. Okay. If you think about it, like, in reality, anytime CMON does a project, it's a pre-order, right? You're, yeah. You're, you're backing right. it. Queen. Yeah. It, yeah. Unless for some reason you think somehow that, you know, the next DC United is going to fail or whatever. <laughs> you know? So, it's definitely a pre-order, but there's no, then there's no stretch goals. Right. There we are don't exclusives, know, though. We don't know how much... <clears throat> We don't know how much they're making out of it. We right? don't. Right. It says it may go to retail, but if it does, it'll be standees instead of miniatures. It probably would go to retail, yeah. right? But it won't be this edition that you're right, getting, right? Right, right. It is weird. It's a, I mean, whatever. It's a different delivery system. Mm -hmm. There's none of that fervor that you get with the stretch goals. Mm -hmm. But you do have to wonder how much of that stuff is sort of. It would end up being the same. Right. They would just show you the core box here, and then, f you know, drip feed you the rest of what is available right. already right now if you pre-order this stuff. I like the look of this a lot. I am a big, big fan of the artwork from um, Paul Bonner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. His art is that cover. The art is, is fantastic. Yeah, the art is great. Really yeah. It's is. like so distinctly his. Mm -hmm. I really like the look of his his designs, his people, his monsters. Mm -hmm. um, so I really like that. The gameplay, it took me a little bit to kind of get to sort of come to terms with what I was looking at and finally I, there's this one image that looks exactly like the cards from Zombicide. Yes. Like well, that character. was what I was going to ask. Right. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, like right, right, you're right around here, you're like, wait a second. That, right. Yeah. It's even like the one level, then you unlock yep. the orange, and you have an option right. of two. Then red, you have an option of three. I'm like, that's that's Zombicide. Well, is the, the same? Is, is the it the same? On the bottom looks just yeah. like it is as well. Is it the same you know? designers? It is the same so designers. It's, yeah, okay. it's like that meets Massive Darkness yeah. is what Which I was Which is also their game. Yep. And right. so I was like... Um, and the tiles are the, the, the same three by three tiles. Um, it, they, I think they say somewhere it's based on those systems. I just want to right. know which one it's based on more. Because I love Massive Darkness. And Zombie Side, I'm fine with. To me, this looks, and this is very exciting, actually, like it has ideas from some of the newer games, like Massive Darkness, like Zombie Side Undead or Alive. Mm -hmm. But it seems more closely to take the bones from Zombie Side Dark Plague. Mm -hmm. Which is very old yeah. at this point. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's got a lot of years. It's a little bit of a clunky game. This feels like that game brought up to speed with a class system like Undead or Alive, mm. with just some of the characters of some of the newer ones. It, it, it seems it has elevation now, which yeah. is a fairly new thing. Also, that's with the white that's death, with the boss, right? right? With the white one? death, yeah. had some elevation. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, it is a campaign game. Oh, again. Oh. So you have to know I'm that, to but many. but it is a campaign game that seems to have a bunch of writing in it. So that's not something we've had in any oh, of these games before. Yeah. You Let do me have you like a story, and then you make a choice. You go and read a new thing. So you go through a, an evolving story based on like what character. Um, let me ask you this because I haven't played any of the recent Zombicide games. I felt like that jumped the shark in like two thousand and two. Um, have you been able to play less than six characters in the recent Zombie Side games? Yes, uh, the the Marvel one had scenarios you right. could do specifically, okay. but the base, the standard, was still six. But right, you could so do specific scenarios at less, right? Sure, yes, but it's basically they've. First of all, Massive Darkness, you can do whatever you want. That's what this. So yeah, that's Massive what Darkness does anything, okay. but then. 
uh, um, Zombicide, they have found the ability now to do six characters, no matter how many players, or four. Okay. Some of them. Like, you do right. four, okay. no matter how many players. This looks to be of that ilk. You can do four. Yeah, it which says... Which means if you're playing two players, you still each need to run yeah. two characters. Well, at, the f at the top, it said one to six players. Players. But you have to run four characters. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm out. I mean, well, it's if you better play than the, solo, you run four characters. Yeah, it's, I don't it like is it. better than the old Zombicides where it was six, because that's what kept me out of Zombicide yeah. for so long, is I just had no interest in doing so that. So this looks so good. But it really does. And, and Mike Heller said in the comments here that, that Simon did confirm it is the marriage of Zombicide and Massive Darkness, and both has, of which are in my top 20 games of all time. Like, and really it has excited. standalone scenarios. Now I'm, I'm more interested yeah. in this now, because the two... Th well... It has like a yeah. dark Alice in Wonderland vibe to yeah, it. Yeah, it just does, looks yeah. so good. That art is amazing. So Those good. miniatures are like so chonky. I mean, how many? I mean, so this is gonna take up a lot of space. I'm assuming. I will say that's one thing that Simon does. Well, they do a number of things well, but one thing I really appreciate is that they'll bring on these kind of iconic artists and yeah. let them make a world. You know, like Adrian Smith yes, did, did right. a number, and mm -hmm. this this just looks. Fantastic. This person has a bear? Yeah. Yeah, they have a bear. Of Absolutely. She does. Yep. Look at it. Yeah, I really like the look of this. I think yeah. the, especially again, the marriage of those things that I know I like, the modernization of some of these ideas, mm -hmm. and then having standalone one shot things you can do and campaign. Yeah. Then yes, cool. Then yeah. I can do, then I can pick my flavor. That's right. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's big to me. It's that... gonna I'm hoping that this is exactly the mix of, of comfort food. <laughs> yeah. Because I know some of these systems. Right. And new you know, fresh ideas. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping it's a good mix of those two the things. The best of everything, right? Yeah. Mm. So I guess I just to go back here, so this not this being a pre order system, not a crowdfunding system, I never felt saw first of all an end date for when does that pre order close? And two, mm. does that mean that there's not a pledge manager? Is that the benefit of doing this? So they know how I'm trying to figure out why they would do well, this. Well with Game Found there's not really a pledge manager anyway, because it's all built into the system. When you go back from Game Found, you're done. You don't have to go back and do it again. Right, if because you pay when you do it. Even shipping and everything? Uh, well, sometimes maybe later they'll come that's back and so that's, I mean, that's again. usually the point of yeah. the pledge manager is for the shipping. It's, but it's not the same as Kickstarter. Uh, like, when you do GameFound, you can do all that stuff right away. Oh, and then just not be bothered once. with it. But that also, okay, as long as the company has the shipping information in there. That's interesting. It says, but why pre-order now? What does it say? It's limited edition. Well, you get the exclusives. The exclusives. I know, but I'm seeing if it says here. It's, uh, it's not standy, it's miniatures. Doesn't, it doesn't seem to say when it will I, That's what I couldn't find, it's when. Like, so is this, again, just for them to confirm the order amount? Right, also, right. when does it stop? You know, is this like an open for six months? Is yeah. this up until, you know, three months before they deliver, before the games are on the ship? Like, I, I couldn't... Yeah, that's true, because they do have out. these projects, when they run a normal campaign... They'll then be available to late pledge. Right. Right. So can they just leave it open until they need to stop yeah. it? This is supposed to deliver March of next year. Is that right? That's I what think it so. Says. It's a That's big game. Quick. Keep mm -hmm. that in mind. It's 160 bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not a small thing. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely interested, and I want to see. I wonder if this this pre-order thing will take off. Yeah. I, I wonder. mean, I, I think Simon's testing the waters here, mm -hmm. and there is something to be said to have that. Excitement, like I would bet DC United will not be a pre-order. <laughs> no, like it no, be, no, no, it will not. Because that's going to have a million well, stretch, goals. stretch goals. Yeah. That's different. Whereas this is like they have the art, they have the game design. Mm -hmm. It really is, like I said, kind of a marriage. It's of two an iteration complete, of stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that top ten we did recently, like games we want a second edition. Mm. It like almost seems like a second edition of these two games that are already so great coming yeah. together in one. You know, bringing all the best parts. That's so exciting. Pete Shirey says usually we do the pre-orders for a few months, up to three or four at the latest, and usually announce the deadline thirty days out. Okay. Well, maybe we'll know when the deadline's out. I'm talking about pre-orders when I, I see them. I can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it. that's interesting. See, I'm not so sure on that because to me, Massive Darkness 2 is what I want. Like, this looks like it's closer to Zombie Side. It looks that I way. I think so. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it would necessarily replace either of those. That's not what I mean by that. I just think it's if you. I just want to play in this world. Yeah, this, the I think world that's what it looks is. Great. Yeah, it's yeah. a good. Hopefully, again, it's that good mixture of flavors I know I like coming together. Yeah. Oh, they did a pre-order with Metal Gear Solid. Uh, oh. 
Okay. Oh, what's that? Oh, I, mm -hmm. I thought that well, was way, crowdfunding. We'll be right back. Cool. We're going to take another look with Mark, and then we'll take a look at some non-game stuff. Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower Preview Recap. I'm Mark, and of course, I'm here with my best buddy, Alita. And we just have a handful of games to look at, so let's get to it. And first up, we have Horror on the Orient Express. Now this game, just the table presence alone, is phenomenal. You have a fully realized train as you move down the tracks, fighting monsters along the way, and also trying to deduce who the cultists are before you reach the end of the line. And next up, we have Northania, Collapsing World, where you play a chieftain and you're trying to take over land, get resources, the things you might expect, except there are tectonic forces at work and the landscape will be ever changing. You'll be swapping out tiles, evolving the landscape, going from water to grasslands, to mountains, trying to get the right resources so you can be the ultimate chieftain. And next up, we have the Eternaut. Now, this is a survival board game where it's really thrust into the situation. The snow has become deadly, so you can't let it touch you. You need a hazmat suit, basically, to navigate around the world. But you run into all kinds of different creatures, or possibly creatures, and there's just an interesting narrative around what you're doing and how you combine items to make bigger and better items, things like that. But it's based on a comic book from like the 50s and 60s from Argentina, and it really is an engaging storyline. Now, it doesn't take place during the comic book, but it takes place within the world. There's even going to be a Netflix series around it. So the game is a strong narrative and lots of paragraphs, lots of story to engage with, lots of things to discover as you move around this world. And that brings us to Tiny Epic Game of Thrones. Yes, they fit all seven kingdoms in a tiny epic box. So you are playing in Westeros, trying to become the best of the houses and take over King's Landing. And it's really that simple, but there is more to it. Lots of different game modes, because as you explore and conquer the lands, there's also a way to play co cooperatively where you're fighting against the White Walkers in the Ice and Fire expansion. So lots of neat things about this tiny epic game. Give it a closer look. And so that brings us to my pick of the week. Now, you know, this was almost impossible really. And there's just been so many great games of all of these and I've just had a ton of fun, but I'm gonna give it up for horror on the Orient Express just on the table presence alone. It's pretty phenomenal. And the gameplay was fantastic. Lots of puzzly twists and turns, monsters to battle and dice to deal with. Just a ton of fun right up my alley for types of games that I enjoy. Definitely check it out. Okay, there's five additional games you should go check out. I've been under the weather, so I couldn't cover them all, but Heroes of the Sanctum, we've got Diabolical Dave's Rumble Throwdown, we've got Magic Cards, AI Apocalypse, and Requiem Downfall of Magic. I've had a ton of fun with all of these games, definitely worth a look. All right, folks, if any of these games look like they might be of interest to you, please check out our full previews. And if you want your game featured as a Dice Tower preview, please shoot me an email. All right, folks, until next time, we'll see you at the table. Oh, I'm gonna tell you what, we need a GoPro on Alita. The next yes. week should just be Alita cam yes. while Mark's talking the whole time. Mm. Yeah, we'll all be seasick by the yeah, end. You well, it's image stabilization, right? Doesn't matter. You see her head whipping around? Yeah, all right. Nah. Let's take a look at some non Kickstarter stuff. I love this stuff. Send it to me when you find stuff at tom at dicetower.com. Weird or cool stuff? There's some cool stuff this week. At least three of these I'd be interested in backing. Really? Right, so I first hope it's not one. Really? There's only one I'm backing. Yeah. Yeah. It will shock you. This first one is one my wife would be so anti immediately. What? Why? This See, I think amazing. this is terrible. This is so I'm cool. I'm with Mike. No, why? It, a, it's a one-use thing. Yes. B, I, I bet you're not, you're not going to use it that much. Right. Oh, that butter? No. See, the no, butter? Straight up. Uh, can we show that. the video of the of the knife in action? Because <laughs> this is what all is, the argument you need. What is the phrase? Like what? knife through a butter. It's not yeah, like we need a yeah. room temperature butter. You can't keep your you cannot with your ice. keep Look at that. your butter at room temperature here. <laughs> this guy obviously has never buttered a piece of toast in his life. First of all, what are you talking about? That's like he's, every time you use butter from the he's, fridge. He's doing this. Oh my gosh! Watch. Even with the heated. Look, that bread's about to fall apart. He's just hit his hand. Okay, the peanut butter thing was the only thing I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." And yeah. like, that spreads it nicely. That didn't look that. Uh, that didn't look that impressive to me. Y'all, you would buy this. You would be excited. You'd stick it on the wall. And my wife is very adamant 
that a good ice cream scoop, like a regular a one with really good, is better than any of this other crap. By the oh, way, yeah, yeah, no, the, I mean, the correct way to, to have butter toast is to take a, slab, a little dab of butter, you put it in a tiny bowl, you microwave it for 45 seconds, and you brush it on your bread. Yeah, do you do that? A hundred percent. We have do a. You did not. We did not. I didn't have a I didn't have a microwave. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't have one Hold here. Back, Tom. Hold me back, I have, I'll a, slap I have him. a microwave at the Midwest Annex, <laughs> and I use a silicon brush. Oh, silicon so now, brush. now you see how good a microwave is. They're all right. <laughs> They're good for melting butter. No, because so, you can't, because you have to well, keep your butter refrigerated here. I can't keep it out like I did back home. And so, no, to have that little bit, I mean, I've done that here. I've, like, had to heat up the knife, you know, to try to get my I've butter heard to that spread. You, I've heard that you can keep butter out for days. Yeah. You well, don't I mean, have I have to put one of the, the little fridge. French things, but, I mean, but still, it's too soft at some points. I mean, mm. it's just, it's a little too soft. And also, yeah, in, in Florida, the heated ice cream scoop, <laughs> you never need it. You wouldn't need yeah, it. You yeah. open up your yeah. eyes, quick, scoop the ice cream. Oh my I gosh, that's in. true. Open yeah. it, pour it out, it's, put it back in the fridge. It's hard to eat ice cream down here, for It sure. really is it funny. Is. We go buy ice cream because I'm like, hey, kids, yeah. it's too late. Jimmy's sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, all right, are you backing this, Camilla? No. Put your money where your it's mouth is. Let's go. <laughs> It's a single this use thing. Anyway. thing. That's the thing. It's a single use thing. Yeah. I don't. I, I have a hard rule on like single use things for the most part. It's just I can't justify. I that. I also love that there's a holder like on your wall. So oh, it's like, how much are you having ice yeah, cream? You better right? be having ice cream and, and toast, <laughs> butter toast. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Breakfast, <laughs> lunch, to toast for breakfast. Right. Ice cream for lunch every day. I'm all about mint Pretty chocolate sure chip the for brunch. Prequel movie to the whale. Mm -hmm. All right. The Scenic Library 3D. Now, this we, one. we actually see have this one. Oh, so did I, cool. Was this in there? Yeah, we saw this. Yeah. Okay. Did you even look at today's I did. <laughs> I promise. That's it's a 3D frame thing. Time. Yeah. So Maybe we actually was have so one of these. So that's forgettable. Not, not, not a 3D printed one, but one I bought off like a Facebook ad. Oh, yeah. That we stuck in the library with the Frankenstein. The yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's like a little diary. I like these a lot, although they never look as good as they do on the. Yeah. I like this. My concern with this is, I mean, uh, if it's not painted, this is, it's going to look janky on the book. Yeah, well, this one you 3D print, you hope that doesn't fail, then you mm -hmm. paint the thing, then you glue the thing, mm. and I love it in the video, they're like, and then you get some lights, I'm like, well, <laughs> what I gotta are you go doing down, for me? Now I got to go hunt down lights, you know what I mean? See, right. and I'm all like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then what? I'm so excited. I think this is so cool. I would have so much fun, like, I think painting that one specifically, the library, painting the little individual books, and then maybe, like, getting some little things to put on the ground, like a little um, a poof or, like, a little cat or something like that, and just, like, staging it. Like a poof. Like a, a like poof. a. Oh, I thought you said yeah, poo yeah. too. I'm like, what's your yeah, well, no, A little yeah, poo you know, for a cat. Or whatever. Right. Little, like, yeah, a little couch is a poo. See, I, I could streamline no. this whole thing down to two steps. Uh -huh, oh, my God. Pull out do wallet. Get finished item by a professional. No! I agree. No, yes. I, I had like a wooden one that I got for Christmas. Like one of my favorite things ever was like putting that together and like, you know, putting the little stickers on the books and placing them where I want in the little thing. And now it sits on my bookshelf right between books and it just makes me happy every Wait, time I see thing? it. This is from that anime. That's that is a Baba Yaga. Baba, Baba Yaga. Yaga action. I think this is okay. so cool. I would Dice prison. 100% love to do this. But I want it on a <laughs> resin printer. I wouldn't want the FDM because I don't want the lines on you it. Know, you know, resin printers. Uh, deadly, deadly poison. No, it's fine. It's, no. All right. All right. it's fine. Next. Just keep sniffing. <laughs> a 3D, <laughs> speaking of printers, uh, a printable modular case building system. Mm. <sighs> Again, this We've is one that I've. We've before. We have, right? yes. I mean, something like this. Again, this is something that I'd be like, this is cool. Please make it for me. I don't want a 3D print. It's stuff to hold my mo miniatures. Mm. I think something like this, I just, it looks 3D printed and for to display finished, th something right. finished that I've spent hours doing painting the miniatures, I want it to, I want it to look a little different. You know, something hidden on my bookshelf is one thing. It's like, I put a lot of time into that and I'm now displaying the thing I did. This is a display for something you did. I, wa I would want. Look how much work is going on. Yeah. I could just buy a nice plastic case right. or, a, or a metal case even. I go to, con I go to a container doing. store. I'm getting out with about 15 of those things. See, that means that. I mean, Two dollars. I'm not super interested in this, but I mean, I disagree. Stuff. There's something about doing it with your hands. That's right. This modularity also, something. you can't quite buy the modularity. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That is true. It's neat. Yeah, yeah. but I was I, when I first saw it, I was like, that's interesting. Maybe I'll get some. But when I found out you had to print them, I'm like, this well. This is definitely for people who, well, two things. A are very much into 3D printing, mm -hmm. and B, stream. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. 
Because you put the stuff behind you with the right, LEDs, the lights. and you yeah. design, design your set with these things behind you. Yeah. Let me tell you, you what. Know, I need to get some LED lights all up in this popcorn bucket. I was, gonna, I was just going to say, oh you gosh. put a, that Dune popcorn bucket in one of these. I want okay. flashing lights. I want That's disco lights. That's what I'm lights. saying. I want the viewers to get physically ill <laughs> after watching us for over an hour. All yeah. right. Vacuum marks capture the ultimate suction selfie stick. Get your selfie game on show. How I have no idea what that means. Yeah, how is this not like a straight to retail thing? Like I don't, I couldn't I find agree. anything unique about I'll this. I'll tell you like why. Straight to retail. This doesn't exist. I disagree. Can't you like? This like, is at like, like five below, right? That's what Can't I'm saying. Like, aren't get there, this anywhere? He's like a dime a dozen. Do you think that this is ready to go right now? These people have made more than one of these things. Oh, you mean this, the, their version this. of this? I thought you meant this Well, product. you're like, why is this not direct to retail? Because these people haven't made this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, these, then, like, have, these have been ha around. Then why does it exist? I like right. this concept you know? a lot, actually. They made one, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I've you seen the those octopus trucks. I mean, they're, these kind of things already exist. They're right. everywhere, yeah. yeah. That looks cool. Yeah. yeah. I like the two steps. Take our <laughs> wallet. <laughs> right. Selfie. <laughs> That's right. All right. Know yourself. Oh, this ran out during our... Uh, oh, oh, come on. Okay. How am I supposed to know myself You're so now? close to funding. That's just mean. <laughs> That's just mean, Mike. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Would you like... Mike. Yeah, I, I took it a step Mike. too far. Whoa. I did. Whoa. Would you like to stop making decisions in your life? A hundred percent. And have AI do it for you. I, I guess trust please. AI implicitly. But I think Correct. this is to the overthinker. But this is just like a, a catch for me too. Like if I, if I had it, because I am an overthinker. Like if I had it choose something for me, it'd be like, okay, what movie do I want to watch? Okay. I just want to know Fantasia. what I'm eating for dinner. Oh, can you tell me what to what eat for if? dinner, please? I didn't really want to watch that one. Let me try it again. Well, what if I watch this instead? How many times can I watch that instead of that? Or if I go for a walk and then mm. I can do that and get the head. Like is this going to help anything? The app isn't going to cure that problem. That's what I'm saying. But it's going to make it worse if anything, because yeah. then you have its decision, its AI decision to overthink. This is not helpful. Hey, uh, know yourself. What should I have for dinner tonight? Eat bean burrito. I don't like beans. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. Like, what movie but to watch? It would learn that, though, right? <laughs> right. Better not make that mistake again. How is this going to be better? Netflix already knows you so well. Mm. They're like, here are shows you would like and stuff like that. They're counter, doing a good job of that. Counter to that, I still will <laughs> scroll through Netflix for 45 minutes and then at that point I'm like, I could have watched half a movie. I know. Right, I, you know, exactly. No, I don't have now time to start a movie. Yeah, do you do you go to the things that they suggest for you using their algorithms? I, I can't. You can't avoid it. Butter it's like ice cream. Right there. Ice cream. All right, and then... <laughs> Here we go. I'm all in. I'm all in on this one. So, I'm so glad we're in the year 2024. And right. we still managed to make robots look like they're going to murder you. Uh, this is, you know what, I take back what I said about that selfie stick thing being uh, fake. Yeah. That's not fake. They made one. This is fake. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way. No. Are you kidding? You are an vision. unknown company, yeah. and you think you can make a robot for people? <laughs> Changeable armor. <'Cause> he, <laughs> he needs to protect you. Yeah, I'm sure he's protecting me. He's protecting his AI self. Right. This is just the wildest thing. But it's, it's also the so creepy. It's the creepiest. Well, wildest, most ridiculous thing. Didn't Come, they say it was buying this? Well, Didn't they say it was working on JavaScript? Oh, really? Oh, wow. Isn't that from like forever ago? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But also, they're they're putting it out there as like, and it's so realistic, and it's like, oh, don't use it as your selling point when you're also mm. giving me nightmares. Right. I guarantee you, this is a Raspberry Pi. That's all this is. This thing is. Oh, oh, look what he just did. Oh. This thing runs on a GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you say. Yeah. I, I want to watch that facial expression again because yeah. it's so good. Please, it's do. very realistic. That's mm -hmm. the thing. You can decorate. Watch it. it. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's when you turn it right for the door. That's correct. I would like to find ten specific people on the planet. <laughs> The ones that backed this. If you go to the museum and one of these is there, I'd be like, well, <laughs> this is where you're filming night at the museum. I'm out. So crazy. A worthy bot. 
This is wow. the Mark 10 worthy Bach, though. I mean, did you hear what happened with the Mark 8s? <laughs> <laughs> they made a horror movie this about is that so one. Crazy. Oh, this is crazy. This is wild. Mm. All righty, well, let's, let's run Mike's video of his pick of the week. Oh. 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 I like this also, the, the branding oh, right here. Have Joey recorded a video. That would have been great. I didn't think about that. The yeah, Mark there, 10 thing. There were no it looks like they make energy product. drinks. It does. With that logo. Yes. I'm like, don't run, yeah. a, don't run a tech company with that logo. <laughs> no. Hey, I never go first. I'll go first. You go time. first. I'm going to pick the... Uh, the, the Kickstarter, the Dead Keep, yeah. the, the game found. Put Z's up there, too. Me too. Oh, this is me as well. <laughs> no, the Dead Keep. Me. Okay, yeah. so here's the I, I know, I know, by picking it, people will be like, oh, you guys are definitely tilted towards CMON. In a way, yes, mm. because they're, they know how to make stuff, and, they, and I know it's a good system. Mm. But, man, that's not what's drawing me to this the one. Art, it's the right? art, yeah. the art, and this world. I always say I'm tired of generic fantasy. Right. This... Someone mentioned in comments, it looks like um, American McGee's Alice, and it really bit, yeah. does have a yeah, little bit, feel, but, yeah. but it looks, cheerful's a strong word, because it's it's kind of horror, right? But it's, mm, yeah. it's comic-y horror, it's, to it's me, not it, so It's almost dark. more like where the wild things are, almost. Yes, There's something good. there, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what his artwork looks mm -hmm. like a little bit. It just makes my heart happy to see a game of this size where... Just about every piece of artwork is the same style. Right. Mm. It's the same look. That yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Lovely. I love how <sighs> congruent that is, how it's all going to be immersive because it all looks the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. For me, I'm very excited for it. I all this needs is uh, Meeple Source upgrades, and then I'll be <laughs> in. <laughs> yep. Is that yep. your pick of the week, Mike? The mm, Meeple Source? No, it's not. It's going to be from a very big company to a very small company. I'm going to uh, pick Uchamin for mm. my. What? Pick I was already of the there. Week. Before I picked know. It. This yeah. one looks cool, too. Yeah, I think it looks it really. No it, video. It, it, it looks really way. good. Well, uh, yeah, I know. I mean, that's something they probably, you know, you have to pay for those, so who knows? Uh, I do think this is one where they really need, you know, they, they needed need the, the money, money to yeah, make yeah, yeah. it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's obviously funding. As a matter of fact, I think it's close to hitting, like, the last stretch goal. So, But, but you know what, Mike? You said they need the money in order to produce it, but mm -hmm. it also looks like they spent time putting money into it at the same time. I appreciate that. Like, yeah. that, you know, it, it doesn't look prototype. It's not placeholder art. Like, that is actual right. art. Oh, work. absolutely. Very, you know, and so it's like, yeah. I really applaud that. It's like, they needed right. this campaign. Well, I believe it's delivering this year. So it, it may already be, like, in production, uh, for all we know. I think yeah. it's delivering this later this year. So, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. I like the one game that I played from this publisher, so... All right, folks, that's it for crowd surfing. Um, hey, tomorrow, 8 a.m., we'll be here live, and then for 30 hours with a couple breaks um, in between. But we're going to be playing through the night, through the, the morning, mostly night. Lots um, of night. And the day. And I'm actually running out of things to say. Yeah. The night again. There you go. You covered the all the night, the day, and the morning. They're <laughs> all the three things. I pull out my wallet, night. What about I dusk? I pull out my wallet, morning. Are we playing during dusk? Mm. I refuse. Till dawn. And, and to end oh, dawn. Yeah, I was going to check those two things. It's going to be spooky. <laughs> be vampiric influences up in here. Mm. I'm excited. We'll see you tomorrow. So anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm, I'm Zeke Garcia. Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <Miller. laughs> Nice try. I'm too Garcia. Still.